morning. Welcome to EPG Pakshala. In this module of Ecology and Society paper, we are talking in about agrarian ecology. Here in this module, we are going to talk about organic farming. International Federation of Organic Agriculture Movements defines organic agriculture as follows. Organic agriculture is a production system that sustains the health of soils, ecosystems, and people. It relies on ecological processes, biodiversity, and cycles adapted to local conditions rather than the use of inputs with adverse effects. Organic agriculture combines tradition, invention, and science to benefit the shared environment and promote fair relationships and good quality of life for all involved. Other common definition of organic agriculture given by Food and Agriculture Organization in 1999 is, I quote, organic agriculture is a holistic production management system which promotes and enhances agroecosystem health, including the biodiversity, biological cycles, and soil biological activity. It emphasizes the use of management practices in preference to the use of off-farm inputs, taking into account that regional conditions require locally adapted systems. This is accomplished by using whatever possible agronomic, biological, and mechanical methods, as opposed to using synthetic materials to fulfill any specific functions within the system. The United States Department of Agriculture defines organic agriculture as, and I quote, a system which avoids or largely excludes the use of synthetic inputs such as fertilizers, pesticides, hormones, feed additives, etc., and to the maximum extent feasible uh, rely upon crop rotations, crop residues, animal manures, off farm organic waste, mineral grade rock, additives, and biological systems or nutrient mobilization and plant protection. Unquote. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization def definition suggests that organic agriculture is a unique production management system which promotes and enhances agroecosystem health. Organic agriculture makes use of the locally available resources in combination with the adapted technologies like pest control ma management. Organic agriculture's approach can lead to sustainable agriculture as it has several benefits like stability of the yield, increase in income of farmers by using traditional farming systems once the system gets stable, soil fertility remains intact and there is reduced dependence on chemicals. Since the organic products receive certification, farmers get access to the markets with attractive prices for the produce. According to the latest FIBL IFOAM survey on worldwide certifi certified organic agriculture, approximately 43.7 hectares, 43.7 lakh hectares in 170 countries, which consists of 1% of total agricultural land of the countries under the study. Three countries with most of the land under organic agriculture are Australia with 17.2 million hectares, Argentina 3.1 million hectares, and United States 2.2 million hectares. Apart from agricultural land, there are other areas for wild collection, aquaculture, forest, and grazing areas on non-agricultural land. The agricultural land constitutes more than 37.6 million hectares, a total of 81.2 million hectares agricultural and non-agricultural are organic. In Asia, there are 40% of world's organic producers, which is followed by Africa, which is 26%, and Latin America, which is 17%. The countries which have highest number of producers are India, with 6,50,000, Uganda, with 1,89,610, and Mexico, with 1,69,703. Let's now look into history of organic agriculture and thinkers who promoted the idea of organic agriculture. There have been suggestions that peasants were engaged in cultivation without external chemical inputs such as synthetic fertilizers and pesticides for many centuries and hence can be called practitioners of organic farming. However, the intent that is conveyed by the term organic farming cannot be captured in its entirety if such a choice was to be by default. So the term organic farming has emerged when even in the face of growing chemicalization of agriculture and the emergence of several sub-disciplines within agricultural sciences, there emerged a perspective which was looking at farm as a living organism. The earliest impression of such perspective can be traced in the proposal by Rudolf Steiner for biodynamic agriculture in 1920s. 
The ideas of biodynamic agriculture emerged in the work of Steiner, who had conceptualized it as a part of his larger proposal of anthroposophy and earth spirituality. Talking about the biodynamic system, Lotter in his work in 2003 suggests, and I quote, it uses specific compost preparation recipes, has a strong metaphysical component in its farm practices, unquote, and is understood by some commentators as organic plus metaphysical. Around the same time as Steiner was engaged in launching his challenge to dominant mode of doing agriculture, with more and more reliance on synthetic nitrogen, in last 10 years of his life, 1915 to 1925, Albert Howard had been trying to revive the humus theory of soil health and its relevance for plant growth. Rudolf Stein, Steiner, author of Lectures on Agriculture that got published in 1925, challenged the dominant modes of practicing cultivation during the last 10 years of his life, that is 1915 to 1925, by launching first serious challenge to the proliferation of chemical agriculture. In 1924, a group of farmers approached him to impart them knowledge of what Steiner had termed healing the earth. Steiner responded to this request by putting together a series of eight lectures on an ecological and sustainable approach to agriculture, which turned out to be arguably the world's first organic agriculture course that ran from 7th to 16th June 1924. A recently published paper, Paul 2011, that looks at original attendance records, points out that there were 111 participants which consisted of 81 men and 30 women who came from six countries. The immediate outcome of the course was the agricultural research circle and the idea of biodynamic agriculture getting some amount of visibility and inspiring Dr. Aaron Pryde Pfeiffer writing Biodynamic Farming and Gardening in 1938. These lectures were published from participants' transcripts in November 1924 in German language and in 1928, the first English translation appeared as the agriculture course. James Nordborn studied agriculture science at Oxford University and later applied the theories of Rudolf Steiner to the family estate in Kent. In 1939, he visited Switzerland to meet Dr. Effenherr Pfeiffer, another noted exponent of biodynamic agriculture. His visit resulted in Nordborn hosting at his farm the Betzhanger Summer School and Conference. Northbourne is credited to have coined the term organic farming in his book, Look at the Land, that was written in 1939, but got published in 1940, as a response to what he termed as chemical farming. Revisiting how Northbourne introduced key concepts in his 1940 book, Paul, in his article in 2006, states, I quote, Northbourne's key contribution is the idea of the farm as organism. He wrote of the farm as a living whole. In the first elaboration of his concept, he wrote that the farm itself must have biological completeness. It must be a living entity. It must be a unit which has within itself balanced organic life. A farm that allied on imported fertility cannot be self-sufficient nor an organic whole. For Lord Northbourne, the farm must be organic is more, in more sense than one. And he presents the holistic view that the soil and the microorganisms in it, together with the plants growing on it, forms an organic whole. The first occurrence of organic farming as a distinct phrase appears where he wants. And I quote, in the long run, the results of attempting to substitute chemical farming for organic farming will be very probably prove far more deleterious than has yet become clear. And it is perhaps worth pointing out that artificial manure industry is very large and well organized. Its propaganda subtle and artificials will die hard." Unquote. Albert Howard, author of an agricultural testament in 1940, is often referred to as pioneer of modern organic agriculture since he, along with Gelbril Howard, spent years between 1905 and 1924 at Pusa in Bengal working as an imperial botanist while also observing with keen interest and documenting traditional cultivation practices of neighboring peasants. In 1924, both of them moved to Indore to establish Institute of Plant Industries, continuing their efforts to revive the humus theory of soil health 
and experimenting with different methods of composting and manuring. From 1924 onwards, Albert Howard also worked as agricultural advisor to states in central India and Rajputana. The writings by Howard from 1920s suggest that he had started to voice his displeasure at compartmentalizing of agriculture research and had started to advocate a holistic perspective. At Indore, he worked on developing an aerobic composting method now known as the Indore process of composting and talked extensively about this at two lectures that he delivered before Royal Society of Arts. In 1931, along with his colleague Yashwant D. Ward, he published the remarkable book titled The Waste Products of Agriculture, Their Utilization as Humus. In the preface, they mentioned how the various experiments at Indore of utilizing waste products from the farm in order to increase soil fertility were being replicated in Sindh and at various centers in central India and Rajputana. This book explained in detail how the indoor method of composting could utilize all human, animal and vegetable waste in order to restore humus in the soil. It also emerges that at Institute of Plant Industries, Howard and his colleagues used to conduct short-term certificate courses on compost making and cattle shed management. Howard wrote in his classic book, An Agriculture Testament, that, I quote, the capital of nations, which is real, permanent, and independent of everything except the market for the products of farming is soil. In the preface to his classic book, which he had seen five reprints between 1940 and 1945, Howard informed his readers that, I quote, during the last nine years, that is, starting from 1931 to 1940, the indoor process has been taken up at many centers all over the world, and much additional information on the role of humus in agriculture has now been obtained. To drive home his perspective with a force, Howard used the metaphor of war in his subsequent book, War on the Soil. In a tribute to Albert Howard, his colleague, at Indore, Yashwan Diwad, who had joined Institute of Plant Industries at Indore in 1928, calls Howard's experiments in developing the Indore method of composting, the initial stage in founding an entirely new school of agricultural thought, which promises in the near future to offer a creed to humanity destined to hold its present headlong race towards destruction and the ruin of civilization, enabling it to pose and think and direct its course to safety security and stable prosperity. Thus, this new creed, organic farming, was in the eyes of Yashwant Divad, marked by the maintenance of a live and active soil, producing food capable of imparting to human beings genuine vitality and lasting power of survival. Robert McCarrison was in the meanwhile engaged in researching the relationship between soil fertility, food quality and human nutrition at the Nutrition Research Laboratories in Kannur in South India. He also examined the decrease in food quality due to the presence of excessive mineral nitrogen fertilizers. Eo Balfour, the author of The Living Soil, 1943, had launched in 1939 the Howley experiment, the first long-term field-based and scientific comparison of organic farming and chemical-based farming. She was inspired by the writings of Albert Howard and McCarrison and to stress the importance of soil health, formed an organization called the Soil Association in 1940s and started to publish its journal, The Mother Earth, from 1943 onwards. In the United States, organic farming practices found a sympathetic voice in the writings of William Albrecht, a soil chemist at the University of Missouri. Several experiments by innovative farmers and their practical ideas on organic farming were chronicled by the publisher entrepreneur J.J. Rodell who started the magazine Organic Farming and Gardening and named Albert Howard as its consulting editor. Since 1960s, there has been growing concern about the possible effects of bioaccumulation. The study in 2002 revealed that organic foods have one third of the residues compared to the produce grown using integrated pest management. Albert Howard mentions that health is the birthright of all living things and that health in human depends on a chain of health that begins in the soil, and further elaborates that pests and diseases give the evidence of unhealthy soil. 
there is predisposition theory given by a different school of thought which dates back to the work of H. M. Ward in 1890s and continued till mid 1970. P. L. Phelan's research on corn borer found that if there is organic farming, there is reduction in damage due to pests. Fungal diseases were the prime focus of predisposition theory earlier, but later they expanded to address this issue of other diseases. When it comes to the mechanism of predisposition, there are several theories attached to it. One says that plant, plants produce phytochemicals to protect themselves from pests and diseases. However, if plants are stressed, they produce fewer phytochemicals which makes them more susceptible to pests and diseases. Another theory mentions about the breakdown of proteins under stress which leads to the accumulation of subtle amino acid in the plant sap which can be easily digested by the pests and therefore they attack on stressed plants. One more theory that links susceptibility and resistance describes that the indicator of plant health are the high level of sugars, minerals and other components. This is the most popular theory but predisposition theory is not relevant to the new crop species or if there is introduction of new pest. Organic farming in India. Agriculture in India plays a vital role and forms the backbone of the economy. Post independence the major challenge India faced was to produce enough food with the growing population. The green revolution in India helped the country develop food surplus by the infusion of highly high yielding technology. Green revolution was one of the most important program of the government in 1960s. Hybrid seeds were introduced and large tracts of land were brought under cultivation. Traditional knowledge was replaced by the scientific knowledge by the introduction of chemical fertilizers. Due to green revolution, there is reduction in imports and India had enough surplus by 1990s. The darker side of the revolution, however, resulted in the environmental pollution, toxicity due to pesticides, eutrophication of surface and groundwaters, dependence on chemicals and deterioration of the soil health. The conventional agriculture does not provide any certification and encourages the use of fertilizers and, and chemical pesticides. The revolution eroded the traditional knowledge and the practices of organic farming. Fertilizers remain in the environment for a very long time with detrimental effects, though it shows short term effect in productivity. Hybrid seeds and monoculture poses threat to the germplasm of the indigenous species as they can be lost in quest for the increase in productivity. The visible horrendous effects of the conventional farming are the farmers suicides, pesticide contaminated water and aerated drinks are just few examples. Organic farming deals with all the major issues the agriculture is facing these days. The organic movement started in India originated from the Howard's views which were accepted by the people who were active in the movement. K. A. Gopinath in his paper on organic farming mentions that the scientific approach to organic farming can be dated back to the later Vedic period 1000 BC to 600 BC and the basic idea of organic agriculture is to live in harmony with nature rather than exploiting the nature. In India's national program for organic production NPOP, organic farming is defined as a system of farm design and management to create an ecosystem which can achieve sustainable productivity without use of artificial external inputs such as chemical fertilizers and pesticides. Organic farming is a system of farming based on integrate, integral relationship of processes, input farming and animal and human community in harmony with nature. Organic farming is not only the system of agriculture but a philosophy in itself wherein the three pillars of the sustainability environmental, social and economic lies at the core of the farming. Sustaining the fertility of the soil is the major concern as the land is tilled extensively under the intensive cropping, hence losing its nutrient value. Such extensive tillage with indiscriminate use of chemicals has led to major problems. Rainfed agriculture faces low productivity due to aberrant behavior of the monsoon. Apart from this, other problems are poor farmers, low investments, degraded soils and nutrient deficiency. Gopinath K elucidates that there is a conversion period when a farmer shifts from conventional farming to organic farming. It is the transition time to neutralize the chemical residues in the soil and this period between organic farming and then getting certification for organic crops can take a few months to a few years. The plant products can be called organic when they meet 
all the requirements during the conversion period of at least one or two years before sowing of annual crops. Principles of Organic Agriculture. The principal aim of organic agriculture as per the Indian Federation of Organic Agriculture Movements, IFOM, Germany is highlighted by Chandrasekhar H. in his paper on changing scenario of organic farming in India. These principles are to maintain the fertility of the soil and to produce high quality of food, to work compatibly within a closed system of living systems and natural cycles through the soil, plants and animals in the entire production system, to avoid pollution of any form by using locally adapted methods of farming as opposed to external uses of chemicals, to produce sufficient quantity of food with high nutrition value while maintaining the nutrition value and sustainability of the system, and to make the life of the producers a little better by making them earn a decent living and develop the traditional knowledge potentially, potentiality and protecting them at the same time. The pillars of the organic farming are organic standards, certification and regulation, technology packages and the market network. The states of India which are involved in the organic farming today are Gujarat, Kerala, Karnataka, Uttaranchal, Sikkim, Rajasthan, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Madhya Pradesh and Himachal Pradesh. Conclusion. There is a growing interest in the organic farming as the input cost is low with the use of natural resources. The process makes use of traditional and indigenous technical knowledge of the farmers. Organic farming gives challenges to the farmers to adopt new perspectives and innovations. Though there is low productivity during initial years of shifting from chemical farming to organic farming, eventually there is improvement in the soil quality which reduces cost of production. There is a need to extend the facilities for the farmer as they need access to the domestic as well as export market when they go organic. Due to the ignorance in the agricultural policy, there is less assistance from the government to promote organic agriculture. The conventional agriculture has received much attention in the form of subsidies, official research and even extension services are also available which promotes chemical fertilizers and pesticide use. However, India has of late made progress and if continued support would be provided by the government, organic farming would progress tremendously. Thanks.